Well, good evening, church family. Thank you for tuning in here on December 30th. I'm so glad to be filling in tonight for Pastor Curry. Now, uh, just a little update that Pastor Hank and Pastor Joshua are both out of town this week. Uh, however, those two men have helped record tonight's session. Uh, we've recorded that a week ahead of time. Um, and if you did have a need uh, during this week, Pastor Curry and I are both in town, and Pastor Hank and Josh will be back in, God willing, this Saturday. So tonight, let's start our Bible study. Pastor Curry introduced the series to us, Loving My Church. And a couple times I've been able to interact with that topic some, and I want to pick up on that tonight. You know, we can love the church because... Christ loved the church. And the Father actually told us, he said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So we're told to seek the kingdom of God, and yet we know that the avenue and the way, the primary way God is building his kingdom today is through the work of the church. But we've got to remember, the church has not been in existence for all dispensations. In the Old Testament, it was Israel. In the future dispensation, there will be, again, Israel working uh, in the tribulation period. And the church is going to be evacuated in the rapture. But... We do, and it is appropriate for us to love the church. And that is one way that we do participate in the kingdom of God. So let me give you a verse. The church is a family. It's a family. Notice the emphasis I put on the reading of John chapter 1, verse 12. But as many as has received Christ... To them, Christ gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe on his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Being born into God's family is a direct result of God's work. But I want you to notice it says to them and to those. It's referring to a community, a group, a family. We are the church. Listen, friend, just as God designed that a baby would be born into a natural family and receive love and care and develop and grow into a mature being, so God ordained it that there would be a spiritual family that would adopt us. We would be grafted into that spiritual family and loved and nurtured and become mature, productive member of the family. The church is a family. Listen, um, sometimes we are too individualistic in our culture here in America, and that bleeds over into our idea of what is the family of God. The family of God is a community expressed in a local body called the church. You know, our relationship with God is personal. Oh my goodness, there's things that the Father knows about me that no other human being would know, right? Those things from the past that we hope only would stay back there in the past. But you know, folks, um, our relationship with God is personal, but our relationship with God is not meant to be private, the family is supposed to experience you, get to know you, see you, engage you. Your siblings are supposed to be part of a nurturing relationship with you. So 
Our relationship with the Father, yes, it's personal, but it's not meant to be private. You know, the Bible goes on to say in Ephesians chapter 2 about the church being a family. Notice the wording. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. How about that? Fellow citizens, members. Again, this is pointing to the community, household of God, the church. You know, the church is essential to every believer's relationship with the Father. And without an understanding of our place in the family of God, our Christian life will not be the abundant life that Jesus offered us while he was teaching and preaching. I'll say that again. I, I hope that um, it'll sink in. The abundant life that Jesus offered us, for that to be realized, there's going to have to be an understanding and acceptance that we belong to the family of God and interaction with the church and church members is essential. So the church is a family. And then the next thought I'd like to share, not only is the church a family, but the, but the church is a family where love prevails. That's the kind of family we have, one where love prevails. Notice the scriptures. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 14, we've all read this before, but notice it. We know that we have passed from spiritual death to life because what? We love the brethren. And he who does not love his brother abides in death. You see, if we can express our love for the Father and, and we just say, oh, we love God so much and he's just the greatest and, and we've always got... Um, something to say about our love for God and yet we don't really care to interact and love on God's people then God's word tells us that our love for God is not all it's professed to be you know one of the expressions of our love for God is that we Love God's people. Think about it like this. We know that we've passed from spiritual death to life because we now love something we didn't love before. We love the church. We love the assembly. We love God's people. And we invest into them. Uh, when our youngest son, Caleb, was born, uh, whether he liked it or not, he was born into a family where he had two older siblings, Sean and Nicole. And Karen and I had been investing in those two children's lives for years, nurturing, teaching, and caring for Sean and Nicole. And, and Caleb, if he is going to grow up into our family, he's going to have to what? Learn to love his siblings. And one expression of Caleb's love for his mom and dad is his expressed love for his brother and sister. So it is in the church family. Um, our love for God is expressed, you know, by our love toward our siblings. And, you know, just like biological families, they have to... Uh, be together, interact, spend time, walk together in love. So it is in the spiritual family. So the church is a family first. It's a church, it's a family where love prevails. And last thought tonight, the church is a family where love prevails and that same love precedes our effectiveness out in the world. Love precedes our witness, folks. The Bible says it to us in several places, but notice John chapter 13. 
How will the world know that we belong to our Creator, our loving Heavenly Father? By this will all know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. How will other people know we belong to Jesus? Because we're committed to one another. In that early church, they, 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 they were involved with one another. They shared with one another. They supported one another. Uh, through difficulties, we saw time and again uh, different people standing behind the Apostle Paul. You know, the church loved one another. In John 17, I didn't show you this verse on the screen, but just follow the logic of this. John 17, Jesus was praying for his followers. And he said, Father, I, I pray for these that you've given me. I pray that they would be one like we are one, Father. And I pray that all those who believe would love one another. They'd come together. And he prays in John 17, and he talks about believers caring for one another, coming together in love. And then two times he said that the witness of the church is depending on the love inside the church. He said it this way in John 17 verse 21, so that the world may believe. Our Savior pleaded and prayed for us that we would love one another and our love inside the church precedes our witness outside the church so that the world may believe. John 17, 21. So I just would wrap up tonight saying that love inside the church is a great attraction to those outside the church. Would you mind bowing with me and let us close with a moment of reflection? How is your thoughts toward the family of God? I'm so glad you're connecting with us online. How is your love for the siblings in the family. Our Father, thank you for placing us into a spiritual family called a church. Help us each to find our place of loving and serving within the family. And we realize that our love for you, Father, our love for Jesus is expressed by loving our siblings. Teach us to love one another. Thank you for the spiritual family, the church. And we give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you and hope you have a good week. And we'll see you this Sunday in the new year. God bless.